Put your hands together. Welcome to Ray. Thank you. Thank you. So yeah, my name is Tere. I'm a Cadillac of wishes and a home of a billion dreams. See, I know the cage that is a beast, and I also know the bird that is settling free. I am shattered and scattered like wind. I am clutched sand thrown, overblown bones. I am home. See, I'm an unkept boy. I am Tere Fowler Chapman. Um, I am a gender fluid artist. I work with poetry, spoken word. Um, I run Words on the Avenue. I founded that in 2012. I'm the executive director of the Tucson Poetry Festival and overall just a poet. I just think that it's a poet in 2016. We wear plenty of hats, so just a poet. I was born in Louisiana. My dad was in the Air Force, and so we bounced around a little bit. Um, I landed in Phoenix for like the most, I would say like the longest period of time. What do you want to be my firstborn when you grow up? And I was like, if I can't be a sidewalk, then I guess I'll be a cartoon. And she's like, okay, I don't know. I don't know what's wrong with this child. Because I've always like been like really imaginative, really into storytelling and really into reading. But I don't think that I took it really serious actually until like 2011. I really try to stay true to the moment with my poetry. They're hearing it more than they're actually like reading it. My parents had clear expectations. When you grow up in conservative households, and more importantly, when you break out of that and decide to do your own thing um, or decide to just be yourself, it feels really, really good. Like really, really good to be your authentic self. I am a molder of tomorrows and I'm a meddler of hope. I am a lifeless doll out of a child, mother's mind, and I am waiting. I am waiting to be picked out and picked up. I'm waiting to be cleaned and carried. Because see, I am a dream. I am a dream. I am a dream. And to be a dream, my. It is something else. Welcome back. Words on the Avenue is the only open mic of its kind, and it's an open mic that is dedicated to words in the city. I'm ready for a real superhero, someone who can tear the stigma off mental illness with their bare hands. Fly above the street. It happens every last Sunday of the month at Cafe Passe. The community just comes down with whatever work it is, as long as it's written, and they share it. Can everyone hear me? Yeah. Okay. The reason why it, I started it was because I remember getting excited about poetry, but not really having anywhere to go to just read. I remember like being in Tucson and like not necessarily seeing like a lot of artists that like looked like me, and so I almost feel like it's a responsibility to be like a poet and make sure that if anyone is sitting in the audience that they can look up and see themselves. Yes, yes. When I'm on stage and I make the decision to like perform for an audience, I want to be visible. I do take the bus a lot and it influences my work because this world is just too fast. Being on a bus and having to plan out my day and plan out where I go, it just slows it down. The sunrises are crazy. How they just like melt into the windows of the bus and just like light everyone up, whether they want to be lit up or not. It's a very beautiful experience. The bus is different every single day. Some days it's super inspiring and what are, and like whatever's around me is kind of like what I'm getting inspired by. There's so many poems on the bus. From a far away generation, from a far away galaxy, a girl unwept than I, unraveled in time for the time. For the time I am a child that is built out of pyramids. For the time. That poem is about like how being an artist of color, like navigating this world, and we all started off as dreams. 
Like literally that's just what we were. Like our mom was two years old carrying around a baby doll and is now literally has kids. You're on this planet because you were someone's dream. And that's something that we all have in common. We are at uh, my favorite place in the world, um, East Point High School. And I co-teach the spoken word, the creative writing class with Logan Phillips. And I teach um, women's health here. And it's just such an amazing school that takes this concept of like community and classroom and infuses it with art and like local leaders. It's not, but that's true, right? Mondays are hard for everybody and they're especially hard for younger people. So every Monday we take a film and it's usually between 10 to 15 minutes and we watch it as if the film was a poem. Yeah, Michelle, come on Michelle. We're trying to see like what poetry tools like filmmakers and producers like yourself kind of pick up on like imagery um, or even like stanzas, like how words are broken up in films. And we just dissect it and try to kind of put it in our world. Cool, let's talk about it. So, the film's about a dictionary, the first dictionary ever in her language. And um, why would the filmmaker then shoot a dirt road if we're talking about a dictionary? Like I can think of one teacher on this Phillips in fifth grade that was amazing. And like if it wasn't for her um, teaching me how to write my first book, which was called The Clown Who Could Not Juggle, <laughs> um, and like encouraged me as a writer. I don't know if I would have made it past those years, like so from fifth grade onward. But I had that, like, that one person that like told me that they believed in me. I teach to be that for students, hopefully, for them to realize that you can learn about hip hop in a classroom and that's okay. You can break down films in a classroom. Being able to do that and being able to think out of the box is also educational and intellectual. There's so much devastating stuff happening in this country. She's wearing a $50 ribbon shirt. It's even more devastating when you think about the entire world. But it still feels good to be here. It's this really weird balance, you know. It feels good to be alive. For the time, I'm the sun's son. No? Well, then I'll be the moon. See, I'm a seed destined to death. I'm seed beneath the bloom. I'm cocked wrist before the boom. I am chariot. I am direction. I am a molder of tomorrows and a meddler of hope. I am a lifeless doll out of a child mother's mind, and I am waiting. I'm waiting to be picked out and picked up. I'm waiting to be cleaned and carried because I am a dream because I am a dream, because I am a dream, and to be a dream, my, it is something else. My name is Marcelo Hernandez Castillo, and I am broadcasting from my bedroom in Ann Arbor, Michigan, where it is currently in the around two degrees. This first poem is called Hands, and it's broken up into four parts. Uh, it opens with, a par with an epigraph by Era D. Matthews. It goes, Dear God, if we were made to be ghosts, why do the bullets still work? One, dear God, I have seen the door of a black child's face open to let the sidewalk in as a cop stands over his body. I'm not going to pretend that your eyes are anything like ours or that your statue is of the visible. What counts as the visible when measured by a gun? You are nothing like us. If you were, there would be no need for prayer. There isn't enough room in a body for a bullet or the street with its weeks of rain, or the cop's arm trying to push the bullet further, a tired song in the first parade. 
how deep the well that you can't see the stones at the bottom. In your place there is a song and a window. The boy lying on the street is trying to get up, but you won't let him. He is looking for the door, but hasn't found it yet. Two, to my 14-year-old nephew. In a few years, everything you touch will resemble a gun. You will be one more Midas of black objects. The guard will think that it's possible for a gun to grow out of your hand like a bouquet of flowers bursting from your nails. I'm here to tell you not to run in public, to keep your hands out of your pockets in stores, and never reach into your backpack. Keep your money at hand, your hands away from your body. Hold the only part of you that resembles a forest, Measure how far you can reach and cut it in half. Otherwise, someone else might cut it for you. See everything in halves. The dirt half. The light half of a hundred. Count Mississippis before speaking to the cop. One Mississippi. Two Mississippi. Three Mississippi. Hold your hands like this. This isn't a game, though you're only 14, and most things are games. You are forever 18, and large, and at the end of a gun. Say, yes, sir, and no, sir. I was just on my way to school, sir. That's just a pen, sir. That's just my hand, sir. That's just a pen. That's only a pen, sir. How can I make you understand? that you are 14 and not 14 before you have to figure it out for yourself. Three. Yes, yes, no, long enough to know, enough, maybe, but we both know I do. After Kinchin. Are you afraid of me? There's a name for that. It's posted on your door, though you seem to ignore it. Do you think I am incapable of pain? It hurts to hear the sun make its way through the same body, retrieving the hands that hold it afloat. How else do you think we can be both hollow and solid at once? Am I a small dancing figure with the sign of the cross blessing the wounded? How long have you been looking at me? Then you can see my hands the way they hold my body together. If you can see, then surely the bodies are piling on top of me. How long is enough? Is your house enough? Is your wife and kids enough? Is your car enough? Is the way you say, show me your hands enough? And then I show you my hands, and then you show me yours. Is that what you saw? There's a big show behind the curtains of my palms. I don't want an applause or an audience of you with your badge. I want you to be silent, turn the other way. I want to pretend that just once I can point to you and you won't come. That I can raise my hands and praise the sidewalk that's dry and empty. Absent of bodies like mine folded on the floor. I want to pretend that I can't hear your applause when you pull the trigger. Four translations. Dear slain child, I can hear your hum sweet, a line through. What do you do? Cup breath, a single word song. How long a long please? Line through the young, pass to the young. Heavy, doesn't want to say. Can you hear, father, feather, best? Can you be sewn back together? Or that it doesn't want to be along, please? Everything was so heavy. Everything was at once. Then the blind hum, the cup breath. What do you do with black and brown hands? Hear your own, policeman's radio.
listen, line static in the shape of hands, and the child, who will hum for him, like the knot, like a door held open. I've never done this kind of writing before. I'm writing these very formal letters to Congress people and senators, asking them to include in the infrastructure of their states money for land bridges to get these creatures across these highways. I clock some of these highways out there for more than two hours where there's a cement wall barrier between the highways, in the middle of the highway, and these creatures don't, they can't make it, and they die all day long every day. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, I'm getting good at that, you know, saying you could be a hero, save people. I'm, I'm starting to find the statistics, but how many people die in Minnesota from a car accidents due to raccoons and deer, you know, and then like, you'd be like, you could be a hero and save people's lives, or you could create jobs. They love that. <laughs> and then, oh, one of my other favorite parts is I have index cards in my, um, what's it called, glove box. And I um, make a little, wherever I'm at, I make little drawings and put a little sentence on there that cooks people who listen. And I'll put an email address on there just for that critter. And then I'll leave it everywhere. Like I'll leave them in subways, coffee shops, community centers, laundromats. And people start writing back to me. And then I write back as that animal. Like, one of the last ones was the dusky seaside sparrow from southern Florida. And I'll say, you know, I'm going to introduce myself as the dusky seaside sparrow. And I'll say, this is, a, this is a recording a nice ornithologist made of me singing on SoundCloud and Joy. And they'll write back, and this goes back and forth, and finally I'll say, oh, these are my mating habits, this is the kind of straw I like to make my nest, I like these kind of bugs. And then eventually I say, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention that in 1988, my friends, my family, my neighbors, we were all wiped out and destroyed. Thanks. <laughs> and then it becomes this antagonistic exchange. Like, hey, what's wrong with you? I'm like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> And then I also, another part of it is another section is I sleep in my car in Walmart parking lots. And then in the morning I use Walmart as this magical portal. Because they're very, uh, it's very odd. There are 9,000, I'm dating a Walmart truck driver now. And we meet up in different states. So I've gotten all this great insight from him. And um, there are 9,000 Walmarts in the lower 48 states. And... The small ones have 250,000 items. The large ones have half a million or more. Times that by 9,000. Really incredibly unsustainable bullshit. <laughs> What's fascinating, though, is that you, the terrains are so vastly different. You're in Florida Walmart, you're in Montana, you're in Arizona. But when you enter, it's the Walmart dimension, and it's really interesting. And... Um, Anyway, I do a spiral walk inside the Walmart, listening to the extinct animals, and then kneel down and write. I also have a lawsuit against McDonald's as part of it. Anyway, let me read some of the poems. <laughs> Pop quiz. How many people know the form Cento? Oh, come on, man. Oh, man. I was hoping to be like, yeah, Seto, I'm into it. <laughs> no, it's fucking cricket. Damn. <laughs> okay. So, Sento is basically a found poem. You take excerpts of shit. So, for example, um, I don't know, anyone's favorite poem and another favorite poem and then a newspaper clipping. And you go, <laughs> poem. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I got some of the English makers going, damn, I knew that. I knew that one. She's <laughs> Sento. <laughs> so. I just be like, I'm stealing shit. Now it's a poem. Um, that was. Uh, so this is a sento, and I didn't write any of this. This is everything found, landed on me, and those I love. How many people believe in trigger warnings? Okay, so this is a trigger warning for a lot of things. 
okay? <laughs> so racism, colonization, ableism, whatever you got in this room that we experience in the U.S. Empire, mm, it's in this poem. <laughs> and I open with an epigraph. And those scars I had hidden with smiles and good fucking lay open. And I don't know any more tricks. I'm really colored. And I'm really sad sometimes. And you hurt me. By Nosake Shange. What happened? Oh, sweetie, let me get that for you. What do you mean? No, thank you. You don't want my help? Some people are just ungrateful. I was helping you. You are so brave. Please step on the scale. Please step on the scale. Please step off the scale. You are so brave. I've never seen anyone on a dance floor protest move like that. What a pimp! Can I touch your cane? Does it hurt? Quote, people with disabilities are often seen as flawed beings whose hope of normalcy rests in becoming more like non-disabled people or by becoming cured. Sin's invalid. When will you get better? Don't worry, everything will be normal soon. If you just try hard enough, you will heal. If you just pray hard enough, I know you will heal. Have you tried acupuncture, water therapy, turmeric, meditation, seeing the star spangle backwards in all of your languages? If you do that, you will heal. If you just take these herbs enough, you can be like you were. Better. Normal. Why are you walking or talking so slow? This is the city of hustle, son. Buck up, dear blank. I understand that you have accessibility needs, and we as a queer progressive organization love, mm, love, love, love your work. <laughs> but we cannot, unfortunately, we find your request to be unrealistic. We understand that you are a queer and transgender and person of color with migrants and limited income, but we cannot fund you at this time. Please do though, yeah, send us some samples of your work so that we may distribute them to our participants for free. <laughs> Dear, is insert a sign at birth name you no longer identify with and frankly want to hurt yourself when you hear it. It has come to our attention that you are 100% disabled. You cannot work at all. Disabled people don't work. They don't breathe. They don't have real lives. No, don't sleep. Don't do anything. Disabled people do not work. Does it hurt still? Classification. No prolonged standing, walking, steel pin, impacted, osteoectomy, Aiken McBride. Constant deviance. Constant deviance. Constant deviance in the foot based on affected use. Constant deviance. Cane usage to support impediment and prolonged limp. Oh my! <laughs> Look at that hair. Don't you have a boyfriend to come to physical therapy with you? Seen as flawed beings whose hope of normalcy rests in becoming more like non-disabled people or by becoming cured. For the report, we're going to need to see some ID yeah, that can't possibly be you. <laughs> you were attractive once. What happened? Please step on the scale. So you were attacked? What did you do to motivate the attack? What does, okay, I'm trying to fill out this application for you and I'm really confused. What does LGBTQ, LGBTQ mean? Well, ma'am, we have to use the biological sex it says on the paperwork. It'd be nice if you wore some lipstick, you know, look cute. Maybe put on some makeup. It might make this situation, this whole process a little easier for you. Does it hurt still? Hasn't it been years now? Why aren't you better? Hey, based on your old life, don't you want to become more like me? Do you have a fundraiser? I don't know any disabled people personally, but we can raise friends, funds to help you because we think you deserve it. Yo, this is the city of hustle, son. Buck up. You don't know what you are doing. Give me that. You don't know how to take care of yourself. Ugh, you are so slow. It's hard to imagine you could do anything by yourself at all. You are so pathetic. How could somebody be with you? Does it hurt still? Still. Yo, yeah, homie. Yeah, we're all going to the club. Cute, cute. What you gonna wear? A new haircut, right? Uh, should be some cuties there. Oh, oh yeah, yes. Sorry, dude. I, I forgot. Yeah, there are stairs. The march is 2.5 miles long. Maybe you can meet us at the rally. 
Oh, look at that little boy with a cane. Why do I have to get up? You want my seat, faggot? So you're attacked. Why do I have to get up, chink? You already took all of our jobs, all your people. Now you want my seat? He doesn't even look disabled. If you have any concerns around safety at this event, conference, protest, you should really bring up these concerns to this cisgender, rad, skinny, able-bodied person with money who confuses wellness work for everybody gets better work. Wait, <laughs> that's supposed to be a girl? Oh, you look so cute when you dance. Let me take a picture of you holding your back and your cane. Show the cane, show the cane. What did you do for somebody to attack you? You must have asked for it. We'll help you because we think you deserve it. Not like some people with disabilities, you know, the ones who drool and make a fuss. You'll be normal soon, won't you? It's not far, it's just a few blocks, friend. Oh, I know you're in pain, but you can make it, homie. I believe in you. What do you mean, no thank you? All your people are so ungrateful. What do you mean, no thank you? You don't want my help? You know if you just lose some weight, your foot will probably get better. Please step on the scale. Please step on the scale. Please step off the scale. Thank you. Woo!